Hiya, it's Elena from Delve Interiors, back with another video. Today we're going to go through eight quite common design mistakes and how to fix them and hopefully get your room looking as interior designed as possible. Point number one, getting the scale of your furniture and decor right. Let's start at the beginning. When you go into a furniture sewing room, you look at the furniture, you see the, the, the sets together. They're also in a huge warehouse environment. So a sofa will tend to look much smaller than it actually is once you get it into your space. To avoid this, look at your space first measure everything, make sure what you need for the space, you've got it in your head before you leave the house and go to look at furniture in the first place. One of the things you can do, use cardboard boxes to create the size of the sofa or table or rug, anything like that. So it's a very cheap way to make sure how much space it's going to make uh, use up and what it's going to roughly look like in, in your area. That, For instance, if you've got a snug, you might want it filled with quite a lot of squishy nice furniture because you're looking at like a family room where everyone's going to be chilling out. If you're trying to create a more formal space then that tends to be a little bit more delicate furniture not quite so sort of big and, and taking up so much space. It, it is down to that however if you do clutter your space too much with overly large furniture or even too small furniture the design and the space is going to feel off which of course then leads to you not being particularly happy with your room. The size and scale of artwork is another thing that can really pull the space off. So by not having the right size artwork, not hanging it at the right space, at the right height, sorry, um, that again can, can cause the whole space to be off. Usually a rule of thumb is that it's eye level. For me, I'm six foot, so all of my mirrors, none of my short friends can see in. But for me, that's the perfect height because I can see in the mirror, I can see the artwork. Usually if you make sure that you can see it yourself and it's above the sofa or table by probably a good 30 inches or so you, you're probably going to be roundabout right on where the artwork is again use pieces of paper pieces of card in the same size that of artwork you're looking at pin it to the wall or masking tape so you don't damage your wall and again you can get a very good idea of what it's going to look like before you're actually buying the piece there's no clear focal point in the room. Again, this is another thing that is a design mistake in the sense that it, if you've got too many focal points going on on the room, and what I mean by focal point is usually it's sort of like the main part of the room where your eye is drawn to. A sofa or a, usually in a bedroom it'd be the bed because that's usually the main show of the bedroom. If you've got too much of that going on, Again, you're pulling the eye everywhere in the room. It doesn't feel cohesive. It's not a relaxing space to be in. So to avoid that, you need to create a focal point. If it's a large room, it might have more than one. Usually, especially with houses nowadays, you're gonna have quite a small room. So it's usually gonna be the one focal point. A little tips to create focal points in a room. And I feel like I'm saying focal points a lot. If you don't have one, create one. Like I said, modern families nowadays, it's gonna be a TV. Wherever your TV is, normally things are facing that. Or if it's a fireplace, which is probably one of the easier ones, if you're lucky enough to have a fireplace, moving your furniture to be facing that fireplace will create the focal point. Effectively, you're just trying to draw everyone's eye to whichever point in that room you want to draw attention to. As I mentioned, even if you've got a small space, a focal point can be created. But if you've got a very large space, this is when you might be creating more than one. Let's take a bedroom, for example. The bed, like I mentioned, is going to be your main focal point but there might be a seating area because you've got a large uh, bay window that you want to create another space in so you'd, you could have the bed a seating area and even if you want to create a wow factor out of it a wardrobe space I wouldn't recommend doing this in a very small room but if you're working with much larger rooms then creating a number of focal points is actually quite a good idea it brings uh, interest into the room and it makes it feel more lived in if you've got a large room and there's just one sort of bed in the space and not, not much else you're actually again going to pull the design off and it's not going to feel cohesive or relaxing this is my pet hate and everyone seems to do it and that is buying furniture sets and you can be completely forgiven again you see it in all the show homes you see it in catalogues and you go into a shop and they always have the matching sets together when you actually have it in your home unless you want the show home look which is absolutely fair enough it's not for me but if it for you five i would suggest mixing and matching there's no reason why you couldn't buy a matching set but i think it should be dotted about your home this is actually quite a daunting task so mixing wood tones mixing textures on furniture can be quite a difficult thing to pull off 
But if you think of it as a, um, a design seesaw, so if you've got a room where there's a lot of heavy furniture and heavy wood tones on one side and not on the other, try moving a piece of furniture over to the other side and just try and balance the room so you've got more wood tones going on in both sides than just one. Uh, same with the size of the furniture, this can be referred back to point one, where if you are looking at the scale of it, if you've got a huge sofa on one wall and not on the other, you need to balance it either by uh, a console table, another sofa, or maybe a pair of armchairs rather than just one armchair. Choosing your paint color first, that actually narrows down your color choices. If you love a piece of furniture or a rug or artwork, start with that first. That means that you've got a, usually an array of colors to pick from and the wall color should complement it. If you pick a wall color first, you're actually dictating your whole scheme and you're narrowing down what you can pick for the space. By picking an item or a, a decorative rug or cushion first, something that you're really drawn to, most of the time that's going to have a number of colors in it. So you can actually create a scheme from that rather than I like this green for a wall and then everything else turns out to be green. By starting with the smaller items first, you actually create a more interesting scheme. You have more color introduction and usually more pattern as well. So a few tips on Picking paint colours, make sure that you test your paint samples in the actual room you're going to be painting, not just in one space. The lighting is different throughout the space, so make sure that you're painting it on various different walls and then you can hold up decorative items, rugs, cushions that you're going to put in that space against that paint colour in each of the different locations and make sure it looks right to your eye. I usually paint almost like an, an A3 size on the wall. I won't paint my samples next to each other either. I quite like to look at them separately because when you're putting different colours all next to each other, they actually can change how you perceive them. So by dotting them about a little bit more, you're actually getting the true colour. The other thing is if you're painting on a dark or very light background, I would suggest painting on white if you can. If you paint onto dark and you put your samples up on dark, of course, it's going to change the tone of the paint colour. So depending on your back, background of your paint can also affect how your sample looks. Soft furnishings being bought completely matching. And by that, I mean, you've gone into, I don't know, for us, it'd be Dunnell Mill and you've picked out your curtains and your cushions and your bedspread and they are all matching. We go back to the fact you're gonna create quite a flat design. It's not gonna look great. By mixing it up, you're creating personality, adding in color and texture. So you're layering that design, you're creating interest. And there's a few tips as to how to do that. Color, of course, you can get samples so you can hold them against your paint samples and, and any other things that you've already collected for the room. With your curtains, make sure that you're hanging your curtain pole and this is kind of referring back to a previous video where I talked about rentals and elevating a space. But if you make sure that your curtain pole is almost to the ceiling, already you're gonna elongate the space, but also make sure that your curtains go to the floor and they're not seal length, because again, you're shortening your room and making it so it's sort of squat rather than elongating it and making it look nice and long. That being said, long curtains aren't always the most practical, especially if you've got a radiator underneath it. Consider having a pair of what we call dress curtains, which aren't actually drawn um, and layering up with a blind on the window. So a Roman, um, shutters, Venetians, anything like that, which close off the window, but don't actually go across the radiator would work really well. Another top tip on soft furnishings, don't be afraid to max <laughs> mix and match pattern and textures. Keep to classic patterns so that you're not, it's not gonna date. And by that, I mean uh, plaid, checks, stripes, all those won't go out of fashion. By layering those up, layering self pattern materials, basically within the fabric, there's a weave that gives the texture. Some cottons will have it. Sometimes it's actually a woven piece, so it will create that texture itself. But by adding that in, the idea is to always create layers. Furniture being against the walls. Furniture going against the wall sometimes is your only option. What I mean by this, it's about forward planning. Good example is a dining table with only three sides that you can actually get to because it's having to be pressed against a wall. That is what I want you to try and avoid. By surveying the space first, making sure you're taking a measurement, making sure that you're trialing either the cardboard box idea or something similar, it will lessen the fact you're gonna waste money by buying a piece of furniture too big for the space 
way you use the space will be affected by how big the furniture is and how it's laid out. A great way of zoning out a space, for example, is to move the sofa to zone the space. It's one of the biggest pieces. It's probably the thing that you're going to most think about. Using the sofa to zone the space or even drawing it forward from the wall can actually make the space look bigger. Consider how the space is going to be used. Is there going to be a lot of traffic? Or can the dining table, sorry, be brought into the middle of the room so that people can walk around it? When I first trained as a designer, they used to make you do kind of almost diagrams where you do the, the flow of traffic in a house. I tend to do it mostly in my head, which probably isn't the best way, so don't copy me. But you can actually do a diagram of how the space is used and, and get an idea of how your furniture needs to be laid out. Having just one source of lighting in the room, it's not going to be useful for if you're reading or task lighting, anything like that. There's actually interior designers that specialize in lighting design and lighting layout. So it is such an important part of design is getting that lighting right. A few tips for getting the lighting design right. Of course, you can have a pendant. Just make sure it's actually lighting the room. I have central pendants everywhere in my home, but I tend to add task lighting. I don't have many plug sockets despite the, the rewire, so I introduced uh, the lamps. You can actually get a lot of battery operated lamps now, which is fantastic. In my built-ins, I actually don't have any wiring to them. So you can actually get art lights, which are battery operated, and you can get battery oper operated light bulbs for your lamps. So that's anywhere where you want to create almost like another zone where you're going to read in your armchair, lighting to a piece of art. By creating different lighting zones, you're adding that, those all important layers to your room. Even a dimmer switch being added to your lighting can make such a difference. So you can control that level of the light. It's not always blasting you in the face. If it comes to the evening and you want a more cozy look, you can dim that light down. Having a cluttered space. So get that storage introduced early on into your design to avoid any clutter that you're gonna come across. So anywhere where you can store all those letters that come through, cupboard space for uh, kids' toys. And of course, they're gonna pull them all out. But the idea is that you're gonna be able to put it away at the end of the day, and it'll be hidden away from view when they've gone to bed, organized, filing, anything like that. You want to make sure that you've got that space ready for it, rather than a space that's not designed to allow for everyday living. And it's not practical. So you've literally got no cupboard space, no drawers, anywhere to hide anything that's in everyday use, was it? tidy tidy house tidy mind is that the, the saying you want to have a, a room where you can hide that away and you can have a nice relaxing atmosphere where you don't have to look at your own mess introducing strong wallpapers or patterns the main design mistake that people make with introducing a, a large pattern a strong pattern or a strong color wallpaper is that they only do it in one bit of the room so you might have well a feature wall which I don't necessarily like a feature wall but it, it's something that a lot of people still do and a feature wall will then create a focal point in the space which is exactly what you should do however the mistake is that you don't introduce that color pattern or texture anywhere else in the room so you might have a really bold wall and then the rest is completely beige or magnolia by unbalancing the room again you're going to create a design that you're not particularly happy with the room will feel off by introducing that balance, bringing the pattern throughout the room, introducing it, not necessarily the same pattern, but introducing the colors from it, introducing slightly clashing patterns, just throughout the rest of the space, you're gonna create a balanced environment, which will look great. So hopefully by me saying which mis design mistakes happen, you will avoid them and avoid any costly mistakes. I hope you've enjoyed the video today. Make sure you smash that like button